What's up, everybody? It's your girl, Sakina, and I'm back for another Insecure review. This is season four, episode four, so let's get straight into it. So the episode starts with Issa chilling at the house. She's creating a Facebook event for her block party. Um, On the flyer, you can see that schoolboy Q is going to be the headliner, so that is a confirmation that he will be, you know, performing. But as she's making her um, event, she gets a knock at the door. It's the whole neighborhood. They didn't pulled up on her and they upset because their water is off. So Trina is like, do it look like I do magic because, I mean, what the fuck, I can't make the water appear. And so they all come into her house and she's like, oh, I'm sorry. Uh, she forgot to call somebody, I guess. And they're like, well, you're supposed to give us a 24-hour notice. One of the guys is hosting an Airbnb because of a jazz festival in town. And... <laughs> The guy who always says that he don't have no dog, he's like, who raised you? So they is not feeling Issa. So Andrew pulls up on Molly at her house. She's working. And when she answers the door, she's talking about how busy work is. And, you know, he ain't trying to hear that shit. He falling asleep listening to it. So they take it to the bedroom. You know, they start kissing and whatnot. But Molly's head is not all the way in because she's thinking about work. So she's like, just give me a few hours. Give me until nine and I'm all yours. So she finishes her work and then she checks her phone. It's 1.42. So it's then there at 2 o'clock in the morning, way past the time that you said that you were done. So Andrew is asleep and that would have been me, baby. I would have been asleep and she woke him up. You know, he naked. So he TTG. Issa gets a call while she's sitting at the house doing some work and she's answering like, Issa D's office. Bitch, you ain't got no damn secretary. So... <laughs> she's playing this role of this secretary named Sapphire. And the guy is like, look, I need the wording for your flyers. Um, They're due today. So she's like, okay, cool. She calls Condola. Um, Condola's not answering. She also shows the text messages of her hitting up Condola. And Condola is just basically ghosting her. She hasn't been reaching out to Issa at all. And in one of the text messages, Issa's gonna ask, yo, what happened to Kyle Mitchell? You know, she's sending random castor oil videos and shit. And that's exactly how I am with my best friend. We send each other the most random articles, random questions, anything. That's exactly how me and my best friend thread look. But yeah, Condola is really ghosting her. And Issa, of course, don't know why. So Molly is at work. And it looks like she's back in the good graces of the two women that she worked with when she first got hired at the firm. So they're working overtime and, you know, this guy comes in and says something to them. And he switches his name from BJ to something would it be. Like he stopped being called BJ and wants his first name to be addressed. So the ladies is like, ooh, Molly, like, you know, I know you feeling him. And she's like, please, I used to mentor him back in college. And, you know, I'm not feeling him. Plus, I think he like Abigail's, a.k.a. white girls. And <laughs> they started thinking about, you know, the school that he went to. And they're like, the nigga eats salads all day. Like, he definitely like white girls. And they, while they're talking about working overtime, one of the girls decide to leave early. And Molly is like, you know what? I'll stay later. She's fine because... Andrew understands that her workload is heavy and she has shit to do. Later on, we kind of peep that he doesn't, but we'll get into that later. Issa and Molly pull up to Tiffany's house. They're about to, you know, take care of the baby, help out and whatnot. So Issa finds a parking spot. She's like, oh shit, you know, she about to back it up, back it up. And then Molly comes through and Molly's trying to take the same parking space. So Issa's like, um, I got this. And Molly's like, okay so they still trying to get the parking spot and while they tussling over this damn one spot Issa's phone rings and I did peep that it had an end but I couldn't make out what it was so Issa's like you know what fuck it Molly you can have the parking spot and when she pulls up uh, when they finally get together um she notices that she has a missed call from Nathan and in the voicemail that he left, he's like, you know, Andrew told me about your block party. I can't believe that you're doing this shit. You know, you don't, you don't have to call me back. But, you know, I'm just proud of you. I'm happy for you, blah, blah, blah. You know, niggas do that. And, of course, you want to call them back. And then at the same time, they want you to call back. So it's like, all right, girl, call him back. We need to know what's going on with Nathan. Call, call him back later. So um, her and Molly were talking and, you know, um, obviously they haven't been doing self-care Sundays because they've both been busy with work, 
but they're like you you sure that you still want to do it and they're both saying yes but then you can already know that they really not trying to make it a priority as it once was um so they agree that once everything slows down that they'll do self-care one day but just not sunday because it's not working for them in the house lawrence and Derek are talking and you know they're looking at the baby and how beautiful she is um you know Derek actually reveals that him and tiffany didn't plan on having the kid for another two years they wanted to buy a house they wanted to travel you know just spend some more a long time before they decide to have a baby but you know of course it is what it is the baby is here now and Derek is appreciative and falling right into fatherhood the baby starts shit and then he taking notes and stuff i'm like why is he taking notes of the baby poo is that something that they do y'all know i don't have kids so i i don't know what the hell that's about Derek is also nervous too because he feels like look i didn't did a whole bunch of girls wrong before tiffany you know basically sense of a father so he like some little boy is gonna be finger fucking my daughter i'm like what the fuck and then he gonna tell lawrence Look at her, bro. Look at her. Like, no, bro. I don't want to look at your daughter. You talking about some boy finger fucking her? Absolutely not. Nasty. <laughs> so the girls are downstairs talking, and Tiffany's talking about, you know, the side effects of having a baby. And she's like, yeah, you know, I don't really like this shit. She's uh pumping her breast with milk, and she's like, I don't even like my mommy friends. These bitches are shallow as fuck. Like, can y'all believe that? And they're like, oh, my gosh, no, I can't. I, can't. I don't know what that feels like, aka you, you act just like them. So, you know, Tiffany is over the bullshit. She's over the downfall of motherhood. But then she also mentioned something that's very important about how she was telling the doctors that she did not feel right. You know, something felt strange. She was in pain. Come to find out she had a blood clot and the doctors was really ignoring her. But, you know, Derek helped her along the way. And that's something that's really going on today. You know, a lot. I've been hearing it a lot lately how, you know, it's very risky for black women to have children because doctors really don't value our lives and they don't take it serious when we say that we're in pain. So a lot of women end up passing away because of, you know, the medical assistants not really taking heed to what they're saying. And that's scary. I think that's so terrifying. I already am skeptical of having children as it is. And just to hear that, you know, the doctors really ignore you when you say that you're in pain. A lot of the times that's very nerve wracking. Um, fucking around with me, I'll probably have a natural birth at the house because I don't have that to do. Tiffany is singing, um, Derek's praises, talking about how he's so helpful with the baby and there for her. And, you know, Molly starts to feel herself and she's like, you know what? It's so amazing when a man is there for you, you know, just like Andrew, anytime that I need, you know, a shorter to lean on, he's there, you know, just going in and showing her admiration for how Andrew is there for her. And Issa's looking like, damn bitch okay okay jada on your red table talk and of course molly is feeling some type of what because she's like damn bitch every time i say something you got something to say god damn and i kind of feel molly because it is like whether Issa knows it or not she is throwing hella shade and it's like all right why can't she just admire her man she been there for you the whole time to watch your lawrence thing why can't you just appreciate that she has somebody that actually cares about her now isn't this what you wanted for her so after that, um, Tiffany and Molly decide to go upstairs and be with the baby. And Issa and Kelly are left downstairs to talk. And Kelly is like, bitch, you ever have breast milk? And Issa's like, look, girl, just try it, okay? Obviously, that's what you want to do. But she asks Kelly, like, you know, has Molly mentioned anything about us to you, you know? And Kelly's like, no, why? Bitch, did you sleep with Andrew? Yeah what's going on and she's like no nothing like that she just kind of been acting a little funny saying that Issa loves to be messy when her life is just as messy as she claims that Issa's is and Kelly just suggested they talk it out you know it's probably just a misunderstanding y'all get through it just talk it out and Issa said something very telling in that scene um she says I feel like she sees me how she sees me and I think that's how they both feel with each other they're not allowing each other to grow from their past and they both see each other where they once were Issa sees molly as this this dysfunctional girl when it comes to relationships and work-life balance um and molly sees 
Issa as this dysfunctional girl who hasn't gotten her life in order. You know, it's still kind of floating through life trying to figure it out. And it's like, y'all really just need to talk because y'all see each other in the same light. While she's talking to Kelly, Lawrence is in the dining room and him and Issa lock eyes and he's like, you know, can we talk? So Issa lies to Kelly about what she's going to do and she goes outside to talk to Lawrence. And um, as she's outside talking to him, Tiffany and Molly are upstairs watching a baby. Molly looks outside and is like, mm, she sees Lawrence and Issa talking. So she's like, you know, they talk about the baby. And Kelly is like, you know, you and Andrew going to have a lot of Janae Aikos going around. And Molly is like, no, I'm just trying to, you know, coast it out. I'm trying to live in a moment when it comes to Andrew and not really write him off. And I really feel for Molly when she says that because it's like, a lot of us girls, we do overthink when it comes to relationships or even guys that we're talking to. We're really trying to fill him out. Don't really want to run him off because we're doing too much. And I find that with a lot of guys, I feel like guys diminish girls' emotions and feelings all the time. So it's like we kind of walk on eggshells when it comes to where we stand with men sometimes. And I felt Molly when she said that, like, you know, you really don't want to do too much, but you really just trying to play it safe and play, play, you know, play it by ear. And it's just like, mm. but you know, Andrew is somebody that you really don't have to guess whether he feels you or not. He, he like you, Molly. So you really don't have to second guess where he stands with you. But they talk about that. And Molly, I mean, uh, Tiffany is like, you know, whatever makes you happy. And when she said that, Molly's like, wait, what? Did you talk to Issa? Has Issa mentioned us? Um, you know, anything about us? And Tiffany's like, no, why you say that? She's like, you know, because she has this feeling that she thinks that I don't want to be happy. And, you know, you can tell that that's really eating away at the both of them. Whatever they're saying to each other is really like in the back of their minds. Like, you know, goddamn, like, you know, she already thinks this. So is it true? But, you know, Tiffany said the same thing that Kelly said. Y'all just need to talk it out. It's a miscommunication. And it's obviously a miscommunication because Molly feels like, you know, Issa is saying that, um, you know, I'm falling back into the old Molly ways. But here she go downstairs all up in Lawrence's face. And, you know, it's a miscommunication because they're not down there doing what Molly assumes that they're doing. So... Um, while Issa and Lawrence is down there, you know, they have a small talk. They're asking who the baby looks like. They both think that the baby looked like Kelly. And, um, Lawrence asked her about the block party. She said, you know, it's going great. Then she gets, uh, well, before that, um, she's talking about how she reached out to Condola, but, you know, she, she been in MIA and Lawrence is like, well, you know, I actually want to talk to you about something and, I had a feeling that he was going to say, you know, that they're not together anymore. They decided not to really um, continue to date each other. And um, before he could really get out what he needed to get out, Issa gets a phone call saying that school book Q then dropped out, honey, at the last minute. I'm like, God damn. So she's stressing about that. And um, Lawrence wasn't able to let her know what he had to say. But he was like, you know, once you get everything figured out, just hit me up and I'll talk to you about it. So in the house, the girls are in the kitchen, you know, they're doing the moo, 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 moo shit, you know, with the baby. And Issa call, uh, comes in and says, you know, she got a dip because she got some shit to go on with the block party. But she really didn't explain that to the girls. And as Molly's looking out the window, she see that Lawrence is, you know, leaving. And Issa is leaving. So she like, mm, she looked at Tiffany like, bitch, I told you. And Tiffany is like, nah, I don't know. So, you know, Molly is just assuming things and... It's just bad for them. Oh, yeah. And then Tiffany said, um, when they was talking about the baby, she like, y'all, do not get her upset because I only like her when she's not crying. <laughs> she's like, but I love her always. Look, that's how it be, though, because I can't stand the crying ass baby. So I feel her. Look, don't make this damn baby cry because I don't got time to hear this shit. That's why I ain't got no kids. So Issa is back at the house and she's basically stressed she trying to you know hype herself up she in the mirror she getting some rhymes and then mirror bitch is like skirt i don't have this to do today bitch i got problems 10 times worse than you i don't have time to be trying to hype you up bitch i got shit going on i'm a nigga with an attitude okay that's what was on her shirt so 
she like, all right, get the fuck on. So she leaves and she's scrolling through Instagram and, you know, basically just trying to find somebody that she can book for this block party. And she comes across a post of Beyonce. So she DMs Beyonce and basically is on some, uh, <laughs> I'm dying and my one wish is for you to do my block party. But then she like, nah, you know, I ain't even gonna do that. So after uh, doing a LA Google search of local artists, she just has no luck. She starts to go through her contacts. She's calling people like, what's up, you trick ass bitch? Remember you said that your son was gonna be a star? Is he a star? Oh, he's just a nobody. <laughs> okay. Hey, remember your cousin? Uh, do he still rap? Oh, he got shot. Oh, okay. Um, you still got his phone? Oh, okay. His phone got shot too. Damn. <laughs> She's just going through this whole thing of, you know, her contacts. And she is not having any luck. So Andrew and Molly go on a date and, you know, Molly is like, I'm all yours for tonight. I got this and this and that planned out. And he was like, oh, well, actually, I got plans with my niggas. So I didn't know if you was going to have to work today. So basically, I already got my night booked. And he's basically just letting her know, like, yeah, you work a lot, honey. And I don't know where I fit into your schedule. So shit is awkward with them. Issa is still scrolling, child. She then went down to the food truck, and she's still scrolling, trying to find local talent. And then she comes across this artist that is uh, affiliated with Live Nation. Ding, ding, ding. Andrew, she has to connect. So she calls Molly and is like, hey, girl, you know, I, I need to talk to you. And Molly is like, you know, she was down at first. She was dreading the phone call. But once Issa said that she needed to talk to her, Molly is all in, you know, she's like, yes, girl, I know I've been having such a rough week, you know, thinking that she's gone kind of been to her best friend and, you know, that they really want to try to talk and Issa has interest in wanting to talk to her other than, you know, the back and forth that they've been having. So when Molly tells her about her week, Issa like, yeah, yeah, girl, I'm sorry to hear that. But um, look, I found this artist and he's affiliated with Live Nation. Put me on, bro. You need to um talk to Andrew and make that connect please i need you and that changes molly's whole attitude she's like yeah you know i i see what i can do and for me i totally relate to this bro i've been feeling molly a lot in these past two episodes it's like i feel her i've had friends like i'm very i'm a very emotional person look i'm a pisces but um i've had friends who would use and abuse me because I'm very giving. So, like, I've had friends that would use and abuse me. At one point, our friendship was only really uh, one-sided. I would call them and be like, hey, girl, what's up? And then they wouldn't answer, and they would call me. And I'd be like, oh, hey, you're not thinking that they be about to get into some girl talk or whatever the case may be, and it's not. They calling me because they need something. Um, can I lend them some money, you know? And it's just like, damn, like... All I ask for is friendship, and the only time you want to fuck with me is for your personal gain. So, I totally understand that, to be so excited to receive a phone call from your friend and come to find out it's not even them trying to check on you to see how you doing. They they call you because they need a fucking favor. Them the type of people that you really need to ex out of your life for real. So, Molly pulls up at Andrew's house um, with a peace offering. I get some cake and some wine. And they're talking and she's like, you know, I'm not really used to this. I'm not used to men um, being available or being around for me. I usually would have scared them off at this point. You know, another time where I feel bad for Molly, like, girl, he just wasn't the right one for you, sis, even though you do be tripping sometimes. But, you know, she's just saying, you know, I usually run dudes away, so I'm not used to guys basically making time for me and you know Andrew says that he's worried that their schedules are conflicting but he wants to make it work and Molly says you know what your main priority for me that and looking for Latoya child we still need to find her in which they did not show none of the episode but none of the, the show during this episode but you know she just makes it a point that she's all in when it comes to Andrew and they want to make it work so she goes and calls Issa and is like look I know that you wanted me to get this connect for you, 
but she didn't bust Issa bubble you know Issa went into a rant like oh my gosh you're my best friend thank you I knew that you was gonna come through for me and she's like uh-uh I did not and I will not because I want to keep the two separate she doesn't want to you know get her relationship in the mix with friendship or work I guess excuse my dog okay so yes and Issa you know you know she feeling some type of way like damn bitch this one time well not really one time but this time that I really really needed you for this black party bitch and you not come through and it's like I, I'm team Issa when it comes to that because even though I feel like some of my friends do have a tendency to use me um and this, this is a big event for her. This is life changing for Issa. So I would have definitely pulled some strings to get a headliner for my best friend, you know. Um, and Issa is pissed off about it. She's like, yeah, okay, okay, all right. And, you know, she get they both was like, all right, I got to go. So Issa gets in the shower or she tries to get in the shower and she can't. She can't even, you know wash it off because the damn water is brown as hell and one of her tenants in the earlier uh in the beginning of the episode said they you know bitch you're treating us like the damn people in flint now bitch you understand because the water is brown as fuck okay you can't even bathe mirror bitch is trying to be there for you and you just you just ain't got her to do today because molly done fucked you over so Child, this wig is just like too much. It's too puffy. Like it's it's synthetic as well, guys. It's a half wig, so it's just too much. So that's the end of the episode, guys. I think that this episode was pretty good. Um, it happened pretty fast, though. Um, I was looking to get more into what was going to happen after Molly told Issa no. But then the episode ended. But I think it was a good episode. I'm glad that we finally got to hear Nathan's fine deep voice. Um, Condola asked and ghosted Issa. So I'm wondering how that's going to go. Because next week is actually the block party episode. And we didn't see a preview of Condola anywhere. So bitch, where you at? And um, I'm still interested in knowing what the hell Lawrence got to tell Issa. And how their relationship is going to develop. Is Lawrence going to come to the block party? He need to come through with Chad because I want to see them. And, um, yeah, I think that the block party episode is going to be good. Um, but we'll stay tuned for next week. Anyway, guys, do not forget to like, comment, and subscribe to my channel. And I will see you in the next one. Bye.